So hello everybody. My name is Nadege Guglielmoni, and uh, as said, uh, I'm, I'm doing a PhD at the Université Libre de Bruxelles. Uh, today we'll present a new tool for phasing assembly graphs for this chromosome conformation capture called high situ GFA. Uh, we haven't been talking about genome assembly so far, uh, but of course it's uh, essential to have a, a good assemblies for a good 3C or high C analysis. With the development of uh, sequencing, uh, researchers have been studying the chromosome sequences for several decades. And ideally, we would like to just be able to sequence uh, uh, one chromosome from one end to another. However, uh, this is not yet possible with current sequencing methods. And instead, sequencing generates reads, which are fragments of chromosomes with variable uh, lengths and error rates, and these, need, these reads needs to, need to be assembled into chromosomes. Reads are overlapped, and from these overlaps, we can build consensus sequences that are called contigs. But uh, it's still quite unusual for eukaryotes genomes to obtain chromosome-level contigs. And in fact, we obtain uh, several contigs for several chromosomes. So then we need to uh, find which contigs belong to one chromosome and uh, order and orient them into scaffolds. Chromosome conformation capture, or more specifically HiC, is one method that can be used for scaffolding uh, based on two principles. First, intrachromosomal contacts are more frequent than interchromosomal contacts. So when you have contigs that have a high interaction frequency together and higher than with other contigs, then they likely belong to one chromosome. And second, the contact frequency is a function of the genomic distance. So you can order your contigs based on the, this information. There has been uh, several uh, high CSK folders developed uh, based on uh, this uh, principle. Uh, at the beginning, DNA tree, Lacazis, Grail, and more recently, 3D DNA, Salsa, Salsa2, and InstaGrail. And with these uh, scaffolders, we can obtain some, some very nice uh, chromosome level haploid assemblies. Uh, but these assemblies are are made of scaffolds. And scaffolds often have gaps, as the contigs are connected together, often with no knowledge on whether there were overlaps between the contigs, or if there is a, you can have missing sequences between the contigs. So these gaps lead to a, a sharp decrease uh, in contact in the contact maps, uh, which is not good for your high C analysis. Then um, assemblies are usually haploid assemblies, even for diploid and polyploid genomes. So you only get a partial representation of these diploid or polyploid genomes. And having a haploid assembly for these genomes implies that you need to collapse haplotypes to get only one sequ sequence for pairs of chromosomes. Uh, so, this can be quite difficult, difficult for uh, highly heterozygous genomes uh, to collapse highly divergent regions. So ideally, we would prefer to get uncollapsed phase assemblies. But then it's also quite difficult to obtain phased assemblies as we need to correctly associate alleles. But HiC can help with that as basically uh, when you have two alleles from one haplotype, they will have more interactions together than will with alleles from the homologous chromosome. There is another resource that we can use to improve assemblies, which is the assembly graph that is often provided by assembly tools. Here you can see uh, an example of an assembly graph where you have contigs that are connected by potential links based on the overlaps. And here you see that this contig has several potential links with two, two other contigs. 
and the assembler is not able to solve this region that we call a bubble. This is a typical case for a diploid organism, as you have here the homozygous regions that are collapsed and uh, heterozygous regions that are uncollapsed. So ideally, we would like to separate these haplotypes in order to get a, 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 a both haplotypes in a phase assembly. But how should it go then? Gray, red, black, and then should red go with dark blue or with light blue? So that's when we can use the high C information. For that, we have uh, developed uh, the tool high C2GFA that unzips assembly graphs with high C data. So unzipping means that we open the assembly graph to separate the haplotypes. And since high C2GFA only connects contexts that have a, a potential link that, is, uh, that has a strong high C support, then we obtain super contexts that are gap free. Now let's try to solve our uh, assembly graph with high C2GFA. So we can see that the links of gray to red and to orange are strongly supported by high C data as you have strong interactions between gray and red and between gray and orange. So gray is duplicated and connected to both. Then the black sequence has strong interactions with dark blue and with light blue. So the black sequence is duplicated and then the two black sequences have potential links with both red and with orange, which we don't know yet whether red should go with dark blue or light blue and orange with dark blue or light blue. Then we see that there are strong high C interactions between red and dark blue and between orange and light blue. So red is connected to dark blue and orange to light blue. And finally, we have a link from uh, dark blue to gray that is not supported by high C data and one from light blue to gray that is supported by high C data. So we connect gray only to light blue and we finally obtain our phase super contigs and as all the junctions have been made based on existing links in the assembly graph, then we don't have gaps in our super contigs. We have been uh, testing high c gfa on the genome of the diploid non-model animal Adinita vaga. And uh, uh, so we did a first assembly uh, and the contigs assembly size was 182 megabases with a, an N50 of 269 kilobases. So the N50 represents the continuity of the assembly. And basically the higher the N50, the higher the continuity of the assembly. And you can see that after high C2GFA, uh, the assembly size is longer than uh, before as the uh, homozygous regions have been decollapsed, meaning that they have been duplicated to face the assembly. And we also obtain a higher N50. So the assembly is no more continuous than it, than it was before. And you can see uh, the contact maps of two super contigs. And of course, the first thing is that we need to check that our tool is not doing something, is working properly, uh, is that since it's based on high C data, you expect the high, high C contact map at, after high C to GFA to look good. And here, this super counting is a connection of 98 countings. And this one is a connection of 124 countings. And the contact maps look as we would expect. So we are doing further works with high C2GFA to uh, add long reads to it. And as it now includes long reads for phasing, we had to rename it to graph on it. And the tool is now available on GitHub. And we also need to do uh, more testing of this tool to uh, verify that uh, the phasing is correct. These are all the people that have been contributing to this work, especially Roland Faure. Uh, who has been working on high C2GFA for his uh, master degree internship. 
Uh, you can find my slides also on GitHub. And uh, thank you for your attention. I will now take your questions. Thank you very much uh, for this presentation. So I think um, I'm going to start with uh, a question. When you are um, unfazing the assembly graph, are you uh, so? Um, are you setting a threshold on the contact count um, to set uh, whether uh, to when you do the phasing, or are you using more uh, a likelihood? Maximization so we're approach. using a, a threshold. Uh, so we have two thresholds, in fact, an accept threshold and a reject threshold. So when uh, the reject threshold, if uh, the uh, value of the uh, the high C value of the link is too low, we'll consider that the uh, the uh, the link is an error, which can also happen. Uh, and uh, um, the accept value is uh, the if we if the high C link is above this value, then we consider that uh, the the link is uh, is a good link. So I so th there's a follow up qu question by Yvonne, which I'm just going to ask, uh, which is uh, is it fast or not? I would assume so because if it's a threshold um, strategy, it should be fast. In terms of, uh, is it fast? That was it. Fast, thing? yes. Uh, yeah, it's super fast because I think uh, the well, I mean, we so far we have been testing it on the genomes up to seven hundred megabases. Uh, so we have to test with more genomes, and I, I suppose that if we have a genome that has that is very fragmented and that has a lot of potential links, then it may be much slower. Uh, but so far, it's super fast because we only have a limited uh, uh, amount of, of paths to, to try uh, since uh, we, we only uh, check path already existing path in the, uh, in the assembly graph. And so far, uh, I've been running it on a laptop. And so it's also efficient for uh, memory. Uh, and um, I mean, for the one with 700 megabases, the 700 megabases genome, I had to close Firefox. Um, Daniel has a question. Yes, hello, Nadej. Um, I was wondering if you if you can use your your tool to basically um, somehow inspect the I mean the genomic diversity in the population uh, somehow because, because here it's phasing, it's only for the two alleles, but can you basically uh, think of uh, generalizing this for, uh, for genetic uh, diversity uh, in a population, for example? So if you, if you have uh, several uh, individuals, uh, try to separate individuals? Yes, yes. I suppose we can there is nothing against it because i mean if you have like for example two individuals then it's just like you have a well if you have two diploid individuals then it's like you have a four ploid individual so and the tool makes no assumption on diploidy so okay cool so this is actually there is a follow-up question in, in the q a which is uh yeah so do, do you think that high c informed facing some sensitive enough to be able to resolve heterogeneous samples like cancer tumor um, that display a variety of structural variant. And I think also an additional element to consider is, is the copy number variation. Would it affect, for example, how you're computing the threshold uh, in your algorithm? Uh, the difficulty is that if you have a small heterozygous uh, region, uh, then it will make just a, a small bubble in your assembly graph. And then if you try to map your high series on it, it won't really work. So that's that's one limit. That's also one advantage of also introducing long reads to, to, to the mix. Yeah. 